One of the many fun things about working with Oklahoma Garden Program is that we get to do expansion projects around the studio grounds, and we're knee-deep in one right now. This is going to be an outdoor classroom teaching people about different shrubs and small trees that they can use in the landscape. And I wanted to show you some of those species and give you ideas for your own backyard. Now, looking on down here, is one that you may not be familiar with. This is Osmanthus. You're going to look at this and say, well, that looks like a variegated holly. But the way you tell the difference between Osmanthus and holly is that Osmanthus has opposite leaves. And you can see down this little whorl of leaves, they stick out from the stem right opposite each other. A holly would have alternate leaves. Now, this variegated Osmanthus is beautiful in the landscape. It's not extremely fast growing, but it has nice alternating or contrasting texture in the landscape. One thing you need to be careful with it, though, is that it's only hardy up to zone seven. Down here is a weeping Theodore cedar. This one can have wonderful texture in a Japanese garden cascading over a wall. You'd want to pinch it routinely to keep it in shape and keep it fairly small or you could have a little bit of a more formal landscape and have this trained up on a trellis and espalier it against a wall and it would be just beautiful. It has a beautiful blue soft texture in the landscape. That's one that you might use as an accent plant. You wouldn't want just tons of them but it is gorgeous. Now on over here we have some crepe myrtle, and this is prairie lace variety. This is a variety that was developed here at OSU. And this is the perfect time of year to plant crepe myrtles. A lot of them are on sale right now at local nurseries. They come in a wide range of colors and sizes. Make sure though that you buy the right size for your site. Some crepe myrtles are going to get very tall. Others are absolutely dwarf. This one is in an unusual pot, and we're seeing these used more and more in the nursery trade. This pot was developed to prevent girdling roots, and you might notice it has kind of a zigzag appearance up and down the side of the pot. Let's pull that out and see how that affected the root structure itself. You can see that the roots have not circled around. And circling roots is one thing that sometimes prevents plants from getting established real well. And, and often that's the reason that, that when we take a pot out of a container that we'll score it with a pocket knife. Well, this type of container helps prevent that from happening. So you might be seeing that in the nursery trade more and more. But again, crepe myrtle, great durable plant, drought tolerant, good for out in full sun. It occasionally gets killed back in the winter, but you can prune that back. Well, on back here, we have a real workhorse in the landscape if you want a hedge effect and, and a deep green screening effect for the back of your yard. You're probably familiar with privet hedge that has much finer texture. This is related to it. This is wax leaf ligustrum. Beautiful, beautiful, thick, green, glossy foliage. It's fairly pest free. The nice thing about it is it's going to give you density in the landscape. And so if you want an effect of softening and a, a deep view back to the very back of your yard. You might do a whole hedge of wax leaf ligustrum, plant that. It's going to be fairly carefree and again it'll give you a nice softening effect in the landscape. Well right here we have meadowlark forsythia and no matter what forsythia you buy you want to make sure that you give it plenty of space. And Because this is an outdoor classroom we're crowding plants together fairly close. Most horticulturists would look at these and say, oh my goodness, everything's way too close together, but this is for teaching purposes. But with forsythia, that's another plant that you can have out in full sun. It's very easy to root. And if you can only afford to buy one, don't worry, they readily root. See these lenticels along the stem? As it has a mounding effect and that lays down on top of the soil, you can pin that down with a hairpin or a piece of wire and that will root and grow new plants for you. So it's very easy to propagate so you can have an entire hedge of it in the landscape. Up here is Carissa holly and this is seen a lot in commercial landscapes. It's a form of Chinese holly, but it's not nearly as spiky and painful if you brush up against it. But that's one that's readily available in the nursery trade. It does well through the winter time here, gives you a deep green texture. It's not going to get huge, doesn't need a lot of maintenance. It's very, very carefree. So that's one you might want to plant as well. Over here, we have some variegated euonymus. And this is a fairly creeping form. But that's going to give you a nice, soft, 
contrast in the landscape of beige and, and mint green. That's used a lot also in commercial landscapes, and that tells us that it's a fairly carefree plant. Again, this one propagates pretty freely as well. Right here we have Cami Cypress, and this is an unusual conifer and probably is going to take quite a bit of care in Oklahoma, a lot of moisture and mulch, but it has a beautiful soft texture, comes in many, many species and cultivars that have uh, varying appearances in the landscape and sizes and shapes as well. Then on over here, we have Spirea, and this one comes in many, many varieties. You're familiar with them, such as um, Gold Flame and Anthony Water and so, faith, so far. It is a, a very dainty shrub in the landscape. It's not going to get terribly large. It blooms in the late spring or early summer, and then these can be nipped back. But take a look at the color of that new foliage. It's a burgundy appearance. Very, very beautiful in the landscape, very attractive. Then right here we have wintergreen barberry. And barberry is one shrub that you better plant where you really mean to have a few barbs in the landscape because it can be painful to brush against. This is one that you wouldn't want to plant right next to a gate. It's not one that you want to be pruning on a lot. So give it plenty of space in the landscape. You don't want to be doing a lot of maintenance on it, but it does have beautiful green glossy foliage. It's another tough, durable plant for this part of Oklahoma. Let's go take a look at another, a few other shrubs as well. If you're needing some tough shrubs in the landscape, then try these. This is snowflake mock orange. And although we've shown mock orange on Oklahoma Gardening before, it's a huge shrub. Minnesota snowflake only gets about five feet tall. And its name indicates, because it's Minnesota snowflake, that it's going to be very winter hardy. It has those same fragrant white blossoms in the spring. So that's one that you might want to try in the landscape, especially out in full sun so you get as many blossoms as possible. Well, if you want a really tough shrub, then try silverberry iliagnus. Now that's kind of a mouthful, but it is a good shrub. It's nice and tough, drought tolerant, heat tolerant. It has nice, when the new foliage comes out, it's nice and silvery with brown specks on the back side. This is one, though, that does require frequent pruning to keep it in check. And so if you're not one that likes to get out and nip on your foliage frequently, keep this one at the very back of the yard or maybe don't plant it at all. If you need a shrub that's nice and tame and it's going to stay in place in a small area, maybe only get two to four feet tall, then try Dutzia. Now Dutzia has white blossoms in the spring it has lime green foliage through the summer. This turns a nice burgundy color in the fall. And again, it's wonderful for a massing effect along a walkway or a pathway. It has no prickles or spines on it. It's a well-behaved shrub, and it's very, very tough. Now this time of year, in July and August, it's hard to find shrubs that are blooming, unless you have hardy hibiscus or crepe myrtle. But here's one that blooms in July and August, has nice white flowers. This is glossy abelia, and it's one of my favorite shrubs because it has a soft texture. It looks wonderful against a red brick house, and the reason for that is that you have bright green glossy foliage that's growing on burgundy stems. And then the white flowers have a cooling effect against the brick wall during the summertime. It will grow on the north, east, south facing wall of a house, look very good, is very, very long lived, and is very pest free. Now back here we have snow mound spirea. And although spirea is pretty common, the nice thing about this one is it has deep, deep green foliage. So if you want a blue-green effect in the landscape, it has a nice appearance in that regard. Also, it has deep red stems, and so it, it's going to look good in the landscape for a sort of a darkening or deepening effect. Now I want you to notice that with this spirea, we have it grouped in a group of three to four plants so that it will have a large mass effect. And you want to do that with shrubs like this that have fairly dainty foliage. You don't want to just plunk it down in the middle of your yard and have it be one lone specimen. That looks kind of odd. And so make sure you group it in the mass effect. The nursery is going to be happier too because you'll be buying a lot more plants. It also looks good along a driveway against a fence if you have maybe 10 or 12 in a row to give you a strong linear effect as well. Well back here is one specimen plant that we've put in here. Now this is of course going to be a tree eventually and that's the Black Hills spruce. But it's very, very slow growing so we feel pretty good about putting shrubs around it for right now. But 
This is one plant that you may be finding in the landscape right now or in the nursery trade. And as with most container stock, you can buy these any time of year. But keep in mind what the needs of these plants are. You might not want to be buying this and plunking it down in full sun in Oklahoma in August. If you find a nice specimen plant like this that you know that you want and it's a good bargain and you just have to have it that day, go ahead and get it and bring it home, but maybe keep it in the shade, maybe pot it up into a slightly larger container and hold it over until late September, early October and plant it then. Now, of course, with container plants, most of them can be planted any time of year, but with certain ones that we know have special needs for, say, cool, well-drained soils, wait until a little later in the season to have them try to withstand the heat in Oklahoma. Well, the last thing I want to show you is blue fescue. And this is another one that's very common in the nursery trade, but a lot of people don't think about choosing it. We've shown this around our studio gardens through the summer. We had some paired with snapdragons earlier this season, and it just looked gorgeous together. Now, blue fescue is related to the uh, fescue that you grow in your yard, but it is a different species and it's very, very drought tolerant, grows in full sun, looks nice in a rock garden or along a border or edging. It's never going to get much taller than what you see right here, but it is very, very cold hardy and should look good in your landscape. Well, I hope this give you, gives you some ideas before you cart off to the nursery this morning or this afternoon, some things that you might want to try in your landscape. And keep in mind that with a lot of us who love gardening, you can move the furniture around in your house, but you can also go out in your landscape and move plants around if you're not quite happy with where they are right now. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.